What's going on guys? John Alder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're going to look at for loops for JavaScript. Hi guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at for loops for JavaScript. But before we get started, if you like this video, want to see more like it, be sure to smash like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. It's all my courses, videos, and books for a one-time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, moving right along in our JavaScript series, in this video, we want to look at for loops. And for loops, or just loops in general, are a super important part of all programming. Every programming language has loops. And we're going to look at a couple of them, for loops and while loops. In this video, we're going to look at for loops. And using each one just sort of depends on your circumstance and why you might want to use it. But after you learn how each one works, you'll get a better feel of which one to use at which time. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor in the Git Bash Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this JavaScript series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got a file I'm calling it for loop.html. And this is just the starter code that we've been working on for the last few videos. In fact, this is the exact code from the last video. And I want to come up here and before we erase this stuff, I want to show you the sort of structure of a for loop. So here to create a for loop, we have four and then some condition. I'm just going to write condition. And then we have brackets and inside of the brackets, we do something. So you'll notice this looks an awful lot like an if statement. So we have this if statement, we have if some condition, and then we have some brackets and we do something in the brackets. So it's essentially the same structure. You know, this would be an if statement if we just change this to if, right? So very similar. If you're familiar with if statements, you're going to be familiar with for loops, while loops too, for that matter. So let me put this up here and let's just go ahead and get rid of this stuff. Inside of our parentheses here, the condition structure is a little bit different than an if statement. So here we start out by creating a variable and you often call it I, you could call it anything you want. You could call this Bob if you wanted to, but uh, we usually use something like I, and then I is basically going to act as a counter, a number counter. So let's start at zero, go to one, two, three, four, or something like that. So let's say for I equals zero, it starts out at zero. And then we have a semicolon. So this is sort of the first little section of our for loop. There's three sections, three little parts in here. So, so we have for i equals zero, then we do something. So every time we loop around, I didn't really explain it, but a loop is something that loops. It goes over and over and over again until some condition is met, right? So let's say for i less than 10, right? And then we put our little semicolon and each of these little sections you'll see are sort of delineated by semicolons. And then here, we need to explain what we're going to do with our counter each time we loop. So here I want to increment it by one so we can go I plus plus. We learned about this several videos ago and that's all there is to it. So let me come down here and just copy this thing, print this out. And I guess we really don't need this, but whatever. So here, every time we loop around, we want to do something and let's just print out, I don't know, hello world. And Let's put a line break here so that there's one in each line. And before we go on, I'm going to grab this div, this closing div here, and let's move this down here. Or heck, let's just go all the way down to the bottom. Essentially, what's happening here is we start out at zero and we say, hey, this right here is the condition, right? Is zero less than 10? Yes, it is. Anytime this is true, we'll execute whatever's between the brackets. So in this case, if I is less than 10, we'll print out hello world with a little line break. Then we increment the counter. So I goes from zero to one, and then the whole thing loops over again. So then we go is one less than 10? Yes, it is. So it'll print out hello world, add one, one becomes two, it loops around again, and then it starts over is two less than 10. And it just keeps looping around until this is no longer true, right? So uh, when this gets to nine, nine is less than zero to print out hello world and then add one, I becomes 10. Then it says is 10 less than 10? No, it's not. So that's then false, right? So this just stops. It doesn't print out again. So let's save this, head back over to our web browser. I'm in for loop.html. We hit reload. It says hello world a bunch of times. Now we can get fancy with this. We can put, for instance, uh, let's go I plus, and then here, let's put a period and a space, save this. So this will number our things. And this is just printing out I next to it. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine. We can count this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right? So there's ten of these things. And that makes sense. 
Why isn't there a 10 here? Well, because when nine goes to 10, it loops over. It's saying, hey, is 10 less than 10? No, it's not. It's false. So this whole thing just stops. It doesn't execute again. And that's really all there is to it. So one little trap that people fall into is sometimes they forget to increment their counter. So if that would happen, we would have an infinite loop and it would just keep going forever and ever and ever. And your browser would probably crash, right? So it would start out at zero. It would say, hey, is zero less than 10? Yes, it is. So it would print out zero dot hello world. Then it would loop around again. It would say, hey, is zero less than 10? Yes, it is. So it would print out zero dot hello world again, loop around. Is zero less than 10? Yes, it is. Loop around zero less than 10. It would just keep doing that forever because there's no counter, right? And like I said, your browser is going to crash. So make sure you increment this. Now you don't have to plus plus every time. You could minus minus. You could do anything you want. Just change your counter in any way that makes sense in whatever you're trying to do. So here we have, you know, less than 10. We could do anything. We could use all of our comparison operators. We could do equal to, we could do greater than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, all the things, uh, greater than, less than, all of these different things. So you would definitely use all of your comparison operators. And that's really all there is to it. Now, like I said, this I is sort of just standard. People tend to use I and for loops. You could use anything you want. You could use an X in here, hey, right? Like I said, you could call this Bob. And if you did, then, you know, all of these things would change. So this would be Bob, this would be Bob plus plus, and then down here, this would be Bob. Same exact thing, um, you know, I is just sort of easier. And that's just kind of the convention. So those are four loops, super easy, not much to it really, but you'll use these so often. And that's really all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 60 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 180,000 students to learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.